the light is without, the darkness is within. Because close your eyes, you go within, you just see darkness. You open your eyes, you see sun, light. Uh, so your sun sign is who you are on the outside, things you do on the outside. Your moon sign, your moon sign is who you are on the inside, how you feel, how you think, all the stuff that you do on the inside, how you meditate. Um, but your rising is your personality, so who you are on the outside, who you are on the inside. Um, whatever zodiac sign your moon sign and your sun sign is, uh, your rising sign gets played out through those energies. So I'm a Libra sun, but I got Leo rising. So who I am on the outside, my actions in the physical world are Leo-like Libra actions. So I'm Libra in a Leo-like way. Now, my moon sign is Capricorn. Capricorn is an earth element. So, the way I meditate, the way I think, uh, the way I feel, it's all about structure, stability, and uh, foundation, sturdiness. Um, growth from the ground up, building things from the ground up. And Earth is the most physical sign. Or Earth is the most physical element. So it's also a very physical, grounded element. So the way that I would meditate is... I would do like mudras. So, if I was an air moon sign, I would meditate on my breath, or I would meditate on ideas, because air is also about ideas. If I was fire, I would meditate by looking at something, or visualizing something in my mind, uh, specifically related to a dream of mine, or a passion of mine. As fire is all about vision, it's about sight, it's about your passions. Then water is an emotional element. So if you had a water moon sign, you would meditate on feeling a certain way, you would meditate on emotions, and you would medit you would meditate on experiencing situations that you want to experience and make you feel a certain way. An earth sign could all, or, yeah, an earth moon sign could also meditate on anything physical. So you could use like meditation items as well, like you know the prayer wheels. Like an earth moon sign would be somebody that did stuff like that. Meditate. That would be the best way to meditate for each moon sign. So the water signs are Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. The earth signs are Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. The air signs are Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. The fire signs are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. You know, another thing for the earth signs is you would also use things like crystals. You would meditate with crystals. You'd wear crystals, things like that for earth signs. An earth sign would also be into yoga, like body positions and stretching, all of that. Uh, physical, like, workouts. Like Wim Hof stuff, that would also be good for air signs, because it's all about breath. But it would also be really good for earth signs, because it's about the body, and warming up the body, and uh, strengthening the body. So 
So it's good meditation for both air and earth signs. Um, meditation is anything that helps you separate from thoughts, feelings, and emotions that you don't want. Meditation is also if you get into certain thoughts, feelings, and emotions that you do want. Wherever your mind goes, your body follows. So, if you put yourself in a certain mind state and you believe that you're experiencing something, that something is happening, it can manifest really quickly. Uh, here's an example. Um, when I fully believe... Okay, so I, I tested it with tarot cards, and I fully believed that I was about to pull a certain card out of the tarot deck, and I imagined that it was already happening, but I was going to pull it, I shuffled it, I pulled the card out, and it was the exact card that I was thinking of. Now, that might not work every single time, but that's just an example of how powerful it is to get into certain mind states and to use the power of your belief, your imagination, aka your magic, how you manifest, use that to um, direct it to experiencing and manifesting certain things. It's powerful, and it worked with the tarot cards. And uh, I also have other examples from when I was younger, like I used to do this thing with dice, you know, dice it has uh, one to six sides on it, and I would uh, intentionally want it to land on six. And I didn't know how I was doing it at the time, but I would throw it. I'd go look at it every time it would land on six. Like I would sit there for like six to seven minutes, just nonstop picking it up, throwing it, picking it up, throwing it. And just about every single time, like there might have been two or three times it didn't work, but almost every single time it would land on six, and I'd be throwing it like across the room and across the floor. So that's another example of that working, because I believed it. So my mind made it manifest. Another example was... I was in school, when I was younger, and we would get like multiple choice questions on tests where you can mark A, B, C, or D. Uh, I would just choose at random. I wouldn't even look at the questions, but a part of me just felt like I already knew the answer. I didn't need to read anything. I would just check it all off right away. I'm not kidding you, this isn't an exaggeration. This, this is real, I remember this. Um, there was over like a, I'm gonna say approximately 200 question, uh, multiple choice question thing, where there were 200 multiple choice questions on a bunch of sheets of paper. It was this really long test we were all doing in class. I wasn't paying attention to what the teacher was saying. I wasn't going over it with the class, I just, went through it all, marking everything off, and I got just about every single question right. I don't remember if I got any of them wrong. If I did, I know it wasn't a lot. I just know that that was normal for me. And that was, like, through all the grades that I was in school. I did that the entire time I was in school. I would just click, or just check off uh, at random. Just about every single time, if not every time, it was the right answer. Because I believed and I knew that I was capable of that if I just put myself in that mind state of it working and it manifested. I also experimented with this with other things when I was younger. And again, I still didn't really know what I was doing. But um, I would do things like manifest doors opening that were supposed to be locked. Well, this is another example, like, I remember when I was a kid at Walmart this one time, they have, like, this 
lock system on a door. And there were like, you know, a bunch of buttons and numbers. I remember I just pressed at random a bunch of times. I don't think it worked the first couple of times, but I think it worked like the third time because I believed it was going to work. And I unlocked the door. Like, I found the code. And it wasn't like a simple code. Like, that. it was pretty crazy. I was able to figure that out. So anyways, I would experiment with this by, uh, I would, I found that if I tried to make it work, if I intentionally, I don't know why this happened, I guess maybe, maybe it won't work like this for anybody else, but this is what worked for me when I was younger, is if I believed that something was going to happen, and then I intentionally made myself doubt it, like I intentionally made myself feel like it wasn't going to happen, I'd walk to whatever location, and I would forget about it, but still, like, I, I first fully believed that I made myself doubt it, then I got there, whatever I imagined would happen would end up happening, whether that was a certain person showing up, or uh, a door being unlocked, um, or somebody coming up to me and saying a certain thing, it's because... It's like, if I thought that I was believing it was going to work, I started to believe that that was going to make it not work, because it just seemed so impossible. But then if I intentionally made myself doubt it, it's like, it made me deep down believe that it was still going to happen. And then something about forgetting about it made it uh, manifest stronger. It, it made it, like... Uh, sealed so that it was like a, a spell that you couldn't take back because I couldn't even remember doing it but it was deep within me it's kind of like it's kind of like a subliminal message or something where a belief is put into you but you're not really fully aware of it it's deep down in your mind so it makes it manifest that's why subliminals are so powerful. If you believe in subliminals, then that's why they're so powerful, because you believe in them. So, I do a lot of mantras, and if there's like something you want to manifest, you can just say that it has happened, or that it will happen. You can just repeat that, or you can write it down a bunch of times in paper of something that has happened, something that will happen, something that is happening, but you don't want to like write down your wants, you don't want to just put that you want something because that's just going to add to a force of longing for it, which is still useful, there's a yin and a yang to everything because with that force, you can use that force and direct it towards something else, but might not manifest or make you get exactly what you want by saying that you want it, but it's going to increase a certain energy that you have, and you can transmute that and utilize it for whatever you want. And the more times that you repeat it, the more times you write it down or say it, uh, the more energy you put into it, and the stronger it's going to become a belief, and the stronger it's going to be put into your subconscious. As something that you really truly do believe deep down. So I was just looking at my chart and I have the most amount of trines or like squares, conjunctions, uh, whatever with my Uranus. So my Uranus is an Aquarius so that would be my dominant planet and Uranus is about change about shaking things up. So, I guess, dominantly, I have a lot of, of Aquarius energy. Um, so whatever sign that you have the most trines, or conjunctions, or squares, or any of those in, that's your dominant planet, that's your dominant sign. Uh, all the signs are important. Your sun signs, 
your, your sun sign is your actions is what you're into. Your rising is your personality. Your moon is how you feel, how you process all the other planets. Um, your mercury is how you speak and how you think. Your Venus is how you love and how you appreciate things. Your Mars is your ambitions, and your passions, your goals, your intentions. Your Jupiter is how you grow. That's how you get wisdom. That's, that's your sign of uh, learning and teaching. That's the sign of expanding on things and bringing uh, things from the dark into the light. So, my my Jupiter is in Cancer, so I grow and expand and learn about Cancer-like things, which would be relationships and family and home type stuff. So I expand a lot with um, home and family things. Your Saturn is your discipline, that's your patience, that's your uh, practicality, doing things in a way that works, instead of just doing something, even though it doesn't work as well as it could. Saturn is how you get things done, that's like your business sign. And I've got that in Gemini, so my business and the way that I think the way that I get things done would be in like a Gemini type of way, which would be all about learning and organizing and thinking and talking, speaking, Chris. And your Neptune, that's your dreams, your imagination. I've also got that in Aquarius, which would be about like mysterious things because Aquarius is all about mystery and abstract things. And Pluto is also about change, but it's about uh, stability, too. It's like changing things so things can become stable again, so things can become uh, the best way that they can be, which could be done in destructive ways. Uranus would be feminine change, and Pluto would be masculine change. So Uranus is more negative change. But uh, nothing's negative or positive, and you need both. You need yin and yang. Um, Pluto, masculine, positive change. So that's change for the better. That's the type of change that would get you out of negative habits. Well, my Pluto is in Sagittarius, so that's I change things within groups. Uh, Sagittarius is all about like the group changer, finding the problems within the group, and uh, perfecting like the group or the the business or the organization, whatever it's in. The houses are also important. Degrees are also important. So this twelve houses and the way that I like to look at it is really simple. I just start from the bottom of the zodiac, the beginning. So the first house, I look at that as Aries, the first zodiac. And the second zodiac, which is Taurus, I see the second house just as Taurus. And I just go all the way up through the zodiacs like that. So the twelfth house would be Pisces, aka the twelfth zodiac sign. So that's like the energies of each house. So I've got Libra, Sun, in the second house. So... Um, the planets are your actions, your sign for the planet is the energy in that, and the houses are what area in your life those are taking place. So Taurus would be related to uh, family stuff and devotion and building. So my, my son, what I'm into is Libra type, type stuff. And it's also my actions. What I do with those actions is I build and I create, like, family and structure, practical things. I do things that are, like, 
that seem practical to me in terms of like uh, business and relationships. Astrology is really important because it helps you predict the future. And it helps you to understand uh, life and the things around you. And it helps you to plan things and time things. And in life, everything is all about timing. If you time things right, and you start off at a good starting point, and things go the way that you want them to, so you can control your fate and your destiny if you know how to time things. So Monday would be the moon day, which would be about emotions and family type stuff and connection. Also, like, anything to do with your moon sign. So, I'm a Capricorn. And I would build on whatever business I have. I would build on that. And I would work on um, acquiring more energy and more ideas in certain areas related to my business. So if I do that on a Monday, then my Monday is most likely to go smoothly. It's not likely to be issues if I was to do that instead of doing something like trying to play out my sun sign on a Monday, which would be Libra-like action. So trying to jump into relationships or start relationships might not be a good idea on a Monday. Uh, Sunday or Friday, which are, which is Venus, you know, Friday is Venus, which is also for Libra. I could play out my sun sign on either of those days, because my moon sign is a Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn. I could also play that out on, like, a Saturday and make that go smoothly. So, the only moon sign is Cancer. The sign is ruled by Mars, Tuesday. It would be Aries and Scorpio, Wednesday, Mercury. Gemini and Virgo. Uh, Thursday, that would be Jupiter, so that would be Sagittarius and Pisces. Friday, that would be Venus, so that would be Libra and Taurus. Saturday, Saturn, that would be Capricorn, Aquarius. Sunday, that would just be Leo, the only sign that's ruled by the sun. I'm just going to add in one more detail to simplify uh, the different signs of each element. So each element, there's uh, three signs for each of the four elements, and one of them have one of three qualities, but none of them have more than, so, so there's one air sign that's cardinal, one air sign that's fixed, one air sign that's mutable, and there's, there's one of those qualities for each three zodiac signs for each of the four elements. Cardinal is all about initiating things. Fixed is all about maintaining things. Mutable is all about changing things. So, on Libra, that would be initiating thoughts and ideas. Uh, a fixed air sign, Aquarius, would be maintaining certain thoughts and ideas. Gemini would be... Um, changing thoughts and ideas, changing ways of thinking about things. It's like Libra starts new ways to think about things, Gemini changes the way you think about things, and Aquarius might just expand with a way that you're already thinking about something. So the fixed signs already have a little bit of mutable and cardinal energy within them. They're like both mutable and cardinal, but they're fixed, so they're kind of afraid of change a little bit when cardinal and mutable signs aren't so much. Okay, so your Lilith is the most negative aspects of your birth chart, so that would be all the like negative things 
in your life, my love, being in Pisces, it's like sometimes my compassion can be a little bit negative, can be a little bit too much, or I can be a little bit too imaginative. I uh, get caught in my imagination sometimes. So that's what Lilith is. And your north node would be like the most positive aspects of your chart. My north node is in Taurus. The most positive aspects of me is that I'm stable and grounded when, when I'm in the positive, when I'm in my north node energies. And I can be stable, I can be uh, very grounded. I'm a builder and I have lots of energy. But when I'm in my negative energies, when I'm in my Lilith, uh, yeah, I can be a little bit too compassionate or I can be too imaginative. The way that I view the degrees is whatever degree your sign is in, if it's one digit, it'll be one of the 12 uh, zodiac signs. Um, well, one of the nine zodiac signs. It can only be uh, 10, 11, or 12 if it lands on a double digit. But if it's a double digit and it doesn't land, doesn't land on 10, 11, or 12, you have to take the two digits, and you add them, whatever number you get, it, it should fall into a single digit. If, if it doesn't, you add the two up again after that until it falls into a single digit. And it'll be one of the nine zodiac signs. And if it's not, it's because it landed on uh, 10, 11, or 12. So even when you're adding it up, uh, if, it's, if it lands on two digits that isn't 10, 11, or 12, you add it up and then it lands on like 10 or something, if that's even possible, then it would be uh, the 10th zodiac sign. So my uh, Libra is three degrees, three degree Libra. The third zodiac sign is uh, Gemini. So I'm a Libra and a Gemini type of energy. And those actions play out in... Uh, the areas of uh, Taurus. So the zodiac signs that are associated with each part of each month. Um, if you're wondering what energies you need to uh, flow with, go with the flow with to not get washed up and to um, flow so that you don't experience negative things and that things go smoothly. Um, so that'd be Aries like things starting in the April, May, January, February. So the later half of March and the beginning half of April would be Aries, and the later half of April and the beginning half of May would be Taurus. Um, and then it goes through all the zodiac signs moving up through the months like that, starting in the later half of the month. And then finishing off in the second, in the, in the first half of the month after that month. Um, and you can go through them like that, and that's how you'll know uh, what energy you're in of what month. The fixed signs of each element. So, Earth, Taurus, fixed. Uh, fire, Leo, fixed. Water, Scorpio, fixed. Air, Aquarius, fixed. Each of them are fixed in their elements type of way. So they're so Leo fixed in their passions, air fixed in their ideas, their knowledge. Taurus fixed in what in their comfortability, fixed in their stability, their groundedness, their practical ways of thinking. Uh, Scorpio fixed in their emotions, how they feel about something. Cardinal signs, the initiator signs, the ones that start things. Okay, that's Aries, Fire, Cardinal, Cancer, Water, Cardinal, Libra, Air, Cardinal, Capricorn, Earth, Cardinal. So they all initiate that element energy. When the fixed ones, they uh, stay fixated in it, they maintain it. And then the mutable signs. The mutable signs is Gemini, Air, Mutable, um, Virgo, Earth, Mutable. Sagittarius, fire, mutable. 
Pisces, water, mutable. So they're all mutable and they all change and they all change up things uh, based on that element. They do it in the way that each element changes things. So air, that would be like, uh, you know, that when air is moving back and forth like that. The earth thing, that would be like when the tectonic plates shift when you shift from uh, one location to another, like if you move. Um, Sagittarius, mutable fire, that's like when fire is already caught on something, but then it starts to catch on something else because it's already started in there. That's Sagittarius. And Pisces is like uh, when there's like two different streams of something. So water is moving this way and then it changes direction. And again, I'm just going to go with the cardinal signs quick because I just made that really brief. Uh, so Aries, the cardinal fire, it starts new ways to look at things. It starts passions. It creates passion in others. It ignites things. Then Cancer, it initiates emotions. It initiates uh, family and home. Then Cancer, or then Libra, cardinal air, initiates thoughts and ideas and relationships. Cancer also does it with relationships, but more in like uh, group relationships and like the, the setting of something, like the feeling of an environment. When Libra is going to have like a one-on-one -on -one connection with every individual, and it's not going to be the same with, with any individual as it was with one person. There is with one person. And then uh, Capricorn, Cardinal Earth, it initiates stability, it initiates business, it initiates and starts uh, practical ways of thinking about things. And one last thing, I'm just going to go through all the zodiacs in order quick, in case you don't already know. Likely you already do, but it's Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, uh, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and then Pisces. So that's the order that they're in in the 12. Uh, that's key, that's important to know if you're going off of my knowledge because I base everything on that order, the houses, the degrees, everything. And this astrology system only applies to this realm, this universe, um, this matrix. So like I was talking about whatever you believe manifests. If you really want to be a Neo, you really want to break out of the Matrix, um, astrology can still be helpful because you'll know how this realm operates. You can kind of still be in it, but break the rules a little bit. Um, if you believe, you can use your magic. And, uh, you can be any zodiac sign that you want. Any zodiac sign that you want to uh, believe you are if you put enough uh, faith, belief, and imagination in it. But still be important to know. And yeah, I have my own realm in reality that I've created that I'm going to be going into either after I die or maybe I'll stay in this realm a little bit and I'll keep reincarnating or I'll keep incarnating here for a little bit longer but if not I'm just going to go back to my realm where none of these rules will apply to me. And what happens when you die is whatever you believe because whatever you believe manifests but what you believe you got to be careful with because whatever you believe will manifest and you want to make sure that you're putting your belief in your magic and the things that actually serve you that you actually want. You don't want to sell yourself short and believe that something is all there is or this is all there is or this is the only way or it's only possible if this. That's limiting yourself as a limited belief. You don't want to limit yourself. You don't want to trap yourself into something. So, keep an open mind. You know, anything's possible. Hey, here's something. Uh, I put my faith and belief and 
trying to manifest something, but the belief involved that I had to maintain a certain thing, and the maintaining thing I eventually got bored slash tired of, so I let go of it, and I realized I didn't actually want it. Like, I could have it. I still could probably fucking have it. I, I know I could, but I've realized it's boring, and it's limited. It's like there is so much more that I could give myself. Why needs are the root of all evil, because if you believe that you need something, you're going to fight for it, and you're going to do whatever you need to do to get it, and if you don't get it because you believe you need it, you just might die because you don't have it. So, you can open your mind there a little bit too. There's a lot of things that you really don't need that you might think that you do need. This is how you become superhuman. And you realize that more things are possible. That anything is possible. And you get more energy. I just gave you more energy with a new mindset to drive your uh, spirit, your vehicle, your spaceship. Uh, you'll be able to go much further in whatever you apply this knowledge to that anything is possible. There's no limits except the limitations that you put on something and knowing what you actually want and knowing what is worth your time and knowing what to put your belief in because you're not going to go very far putting your belief into something just to realize it was a limited belief so you didn't want it anymore you're not going to make it very far if you start off with a limited belief system so you want to start off with a open mind and that's why with that one video I made on my philosophy on a spiritual ship a romance that video that's why I'm dreaming so big of something that could be like that beautiful and that uh, that profound like I'm not just out accepting anything I can get like, it's, it's all or nothing for me, or more, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not thinking limited, no matter how impossible it might seem at the moment, I'm not going to think that it's not possible, I'm going to fully believe that anything's possible, and I'm dreaming, and I'm going for the bigger things. I was actually going to make this video a couple days ago, but it was like a blizzard out. So, I waited till today when it's decent weather, not a blizzard, so that I could record. Um, I had more ideas, I think, and stuff I wanted to say, but that's fine, because while I started recording here, I kind of came up with some more ideas on the spot that I like while I was talking. So, makes up for it. Uh, I'm going to go buy another pair of earbuds today and I'm gonna get working on some music again I'm going to re-record that last song I have five other songs I could also record I'll consider it I'm thinking I'm just gonna make new songs so I'm not a huge fan of those ones maybe I'll just edit them a bit but I mostly just want to make some new songs so that's probably what I'm gonna do I'll have some more music out soon and I'll make some more videos too Thank you for watching. Have a good day.